The crowds are streaming out from conduction autoskediasms auto for Creative Chamber Orchestra. <laughs> and if you're wondering what autoskediasms is, I looked it up while they were performing that piece. And it basically just means improvised for, cham for Creative Chamber Orchestra. And what you saw on stage just now was Taishan Sori leading the ICE members in, he was just gesturing with his hands and a baton and a chalkboard and leading them as they made up music right in front of you just now. Absolutely incredible. It is my honor to be sitting next to Helga Davis, who tonight will be the soprano soloist for a Yet Unheard by Courtney Bryan with a text by um, Sharon Strange. Strange, that's right. Um, and it's the world premiere, the chamber version of this piece. So happy to have you on the show. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. So you've been here the whole weekend so far, mm -hmm. and you've caught some of what is the Ojai-ness of this whole place <laughs> and the community. What's your take on Ojai so far? What's really great for me about being here is seeing all the people come together around music. This is the thing that I think is the most important thing about being here. Uh, I, I was here for a little while last year, and so there are people here that I was familiar with then who are here again. Some of the musicians who are my colleagues and friends are here again. So it's really, really great to come back and to be a part of this kind of coming together around music. Absolutely. Let's talk about tonight and the premiere. Before we do, oh, please. I wanted to say one thing. <clears throat> about what Taishan was doing. Oh, great. So he called it a conduction, mm -hmm. which is a method that was developed by one of our mentors and also Vijay Iyer's mentors, Butch Morris. Morris. Yep. And one of the things that was very, very important to Butch about conduction is that regardless of, of uh, what the gesture is, that we remember that we are we are in that moment that the baton is pointed at us, we are composers. Yes. So that your sound should never be random uh, and that you really think of your next note, your next five notes, your next three lines, regardless of what that span of time is that that baton passes you, that you are in that moment a composer. Absolutely. And this feels like such a different thing. I think sometimes people hear this music and they think it's random and they think that people are just kind of making things up. And it is not that at all. You really are taking all of your experience of a particular moment and creating a piece around, a composition around that moment. And whether that moment is three seconds or three minutes, that you are the composer in that moment. And it's, it's such a great system uh, because everyone can learn it, for one thing, and it works with all kinds of creative endeavors. You can do it with dancers. Butch did it with DJs, uh, with painters, mm -hmm. and with poets. So it's, it's, I just wanted to say that oh, about yeah, please, that. Yeah. And then the result is a, this beautiful organic experience exactly. and the audience submits to it, which is incredible. But it's a crafted moment. Yes. It's not a random moment. And Absolutely. That's, that's the difference that I want to make. I think uh, sometimes people hear it and they think, what are they doing? Uh, and, and they don't realize that they are, that we, it's spontaneous composition. Yes, absolutely. So thank you for allowing oh, me no, to say please. that. Oh, no, please. Yet unheard. So tonight, not Yet spontaneous. Not, <laughs> not spontaneous. spontaneous. Not spontaneous. Why don't you start all. with the story and the text? Well, this is Sandra Bland's story. Sandra Bland died, it'll be two years ago on July 13th. And she was arrested in Texas on the 10th of July, and she was held for three days, and, uh, and it was deemed a suicide. No one has ever been prosecuted. Uh, the police officer who arrested her was eventually fired from the police force, but the, the grand jury never felt that there was reason enough or cause to investigate her death further. What is beautiful for me about this piece of music and, and why it feels so important to me is because it asks a very, very, very fundamental question right off the top. 
which is, what did he see? Hmm. And if we can begin there with what we see when we look at other people, we might then begin to unravel, I think, some of the confusion, some of the fear, some of the mm -hmm. anxiety that we feel when we approach what we perceive to be difference. Yeah. And the question after what did he see is what did he feel? It's like creating empathy. So these are two very, very fundamental places from which to begin this conversation around the death of this African-American woman. And it is not, the first questions are not, uh, they are not accusatory. I think that also people get very defensive. Uh, and regardless of what side of the spectrum you fall on, whether you are a person who feels that that police officers are doing a job and that that job is hard and that they risk their lives, or you are a person from another side who has had a lot of experience or negative experience with police officers, it begins first with seeing and with feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love that this is the place that we begin this conversation. Yes. So, uh, once I get those two lines out, <laughs> the rest of the piece is really to tell <clears throat> the story of, or in part, the story of those three days that she was incarcerated, and then to also bring us to, to a point where we can also examine, as I said earlier, our perspectives, our sight, our feeling. And I don't mean just African-American people or people who have bad experiences with police officers. It's everyone. Mm -hmm. It's everyone. Yeah. Uh, it, it feels very important to me to recognize that I, too, am Sandra Bland. Right? So this didn't, this didn't happen to her. It happens to me also in the way that anything in our society that uh, takes a life, that uh, does not regard a human life in the way that another human life is regarded. This is important to me. This is me also. Absolutely. It is also my conversation uh, and my experience. And so it is an incredible honor and an incredible responsibility, I feel, as a performer to stand in this place and to shake and to weep and to be angry uh, and then to tell, to yeah. share my experience of part of what we imagine to be her experience. Absolutely. With an audience. Can you talk a little <clears throat> bit about the, maybe about the larger text in general, maybe how the, the, the larger form works the whole piece and how the story is told? Or do you want to save that for the audience for tonight? Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, there are also four, four chorus members mm -hmm. who serve as a kind of Greek chorus who ask also very, very important questions about how we imagine black life on this planet, um, how, we, what we, how we imagine ourselves into the future where all of us, where all of our lives and all of our experiences are valued. One of the other things I have to say is that I feel that, um, that ICE and uh, Steve have really picked up the baton to use a very poor metaphor, <laughs> an apt metaphor, but a bad joke. Uh, in terms of their dedication to this music and to this story, it has been incredible just to be in rehearsals and to feel how I kind of have to hold myself together. It's very, very emotional, not just because of the subject matter, but also because of the way we all lean in to this music mm -hmm. and to our intention to shed light 
Yeah. Can you talk about <clears throat> the music and um, Courtney Bryan and the collaboration between you guys and creating this thing together? One of the things that was so much fun about working with Courtney is that she really allowed me, and she and Sharon both allowed me to take the text uh, and to take the music and shape it for who I am as a performer and who I am as a human. Uh, there were a few afternoons when I would sit next to Courtney on the piano bench and I would improvise Sharon's poem. Oh. And then I would look at Courtney and I would say, don't you write that. <laughs> you know, you have these moments that feel completely inspired and you sing something really high or really low. And I said, don't you write that, Courtney. And of course, it's all right there in the music. She didn't listen to me at all. And the other thing about Courtney's, uh, about Courtney's work is that I feel that she captured not only the emotional range of the piece, but really my, my nerves, my cells mm -hmm. just vibrate uh, with this work. And I think we all feel that. And it's a thing that goes round the ensemble. Uh, and it's, it's just been a very, very incredible experience. And then Sharon bro brought the, the poem to rehearsals. And again, she allowed me to take the language and put it in my mouth and repeat things or leave things out or try this piece of text here. And we did that until we came upon something. And then they went back, they went away and they worked. And then we did that until they came back and we had something that felt it was true to all of us, mm -hmm. which is why I think it also touches people in the way that it does. Yeah. <clears throat> one of the themes this year, one of the many themes, is this idea that we're stripping away labels and, and genre, and you being a multifaceted artist who really defies a label or a genre, and same with Courtney, how do you think he almost asks you how can you define the music and what it is or the style it is or or no or, it's, or the it's influence. music it's music mm -hmm. and you know very often when I meet people and I say to them that I'm a singer they say oh do you sing jazz <laughs> and it's it's again it's it's like it goes back to this very first question what do you see mm -hmm. and where do those where does what you see and the assumptions about what you see lead you. So this music is not just about not being uh, in any particular category. It is an expression of a poem, which is an expression of a situation. And we use all of the tools that we have. So I also speak certain parts of the text. Um, we use everything at our disposal to tell the story. It's the story that's important, not what style yes, the music is. Absolutely. This is the least interesting aspect of what we're doing. And it is, not, it is also not the point. It is that this story requires that I sing from this part of my range almost to, to the bottom where I have no air. That's what this piece is about. Yeah. It, is, it is the life, it, uh, and it is also the exp expiration of life. Yeah. And this, this is what's interesting and beautiful for me as a performer to do this work. Fantastic. The program note talks about um, the importance of art engaging with issues of social justice, and that is evident in this piece. But how is that important to the other work you do and just to, you know, larger art outside of this one piece? It's all, it is what I do. And it feels to me to be all one conversation. Uh, I don't feel that when I come to a piece of music that I'm a different person than I am when I am hosting the Ojai Music Festival in the green space at Q2 Music or when I am making breakfast in the morning, it's all one thread. 
I, I, my desire is that life use me, use what it gave me to tell stories and to connect people. Mm, I like that. Can you talk about the original premiere, seeing her name benefit, and how that all came around? Oh, that it was it was it was awful, in a sense, because we I performed this piece for the first time on the first anniversary of Sharon of of um, Sandra Bland's death, and who am I really to stand and presume? that I could or should sing her name. Uh, it was a very, very, very powerful evening. And you never know when you say something big, like you ask life to use you, you don't know where life will put you. And that evening life put me uh, at Cooper Union to to be part of the telling of this story. Um, that it was in, 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 a larger, in the larger context of the women of the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, but this story, obviously, because this piece of music is written for me, is also very personal and Again, I just felt very humbled and honored that life chose me to stand and perform this piece. Yeah. Yesterday, Jen Xu, one of our soloists here with the um, with Ohi, said in an interview um, that she her goal is with her singing is to change the conscious of her audience and change the way they think. I mean, that seems like what you're talking about too, and the same kind of threads that you're pulling on, just trying to change the way people think about themselves and about this world. Well, I, I don't know, I can't change anyone. I'm very clear about that. But what I can do is stand and say what I believe is true. That's what I can do. I can lend my voice to the music, to the kids, to the guests to, to the conversations that build bridges between people. I, I don't think that I can change anyone's mind. I can bring as powerfully as I can an experience. And what I think happens is that then people see themselves. They begin to recognize. They begin to feel. And this is the thing that I think allows for change. Uh, there are so many amazing songs. There's so much incredible literature. There's so many self-help books that, that try and help people change. And, and what I think a lot of, we read those books, we, uh, we want to do better, or we dig in and we say, well, no, this is right. This is right for me. And then you go to a concert, right? Where a person may be performing a piece of music or playing an instrument that you've never heard before. And it awakens something in your curiosity. And that curiosity helps you to see. And this again, like, as I said from the very beginning, it is, it is about seeing something and then feeling something that I believe helps to facilitate any kind of change in people. And it also means that we have to see and feel and face things in ourselves and in others that we don't like, that things that make us uncomfortable. And yeah. that capacity, I think also to sit with what is uncomfortable, uh, if I had to say one of the things that I feel is part of my work, it is to stand in those uncomfortable places and make space for change. Absolutely. 
That's all the time we have for right now. Tonight, that went by so quickly. <laughs> tonight um, at 10.30 p.m., please tune in for the world premiere of the Chamber version of Courtney Bryan's Yet Unheard with soloist Helga Davis. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks.